Welcome to Wannabe Clutter Free, formerly Wannabe Minimalist, the podcast for busy families who are tired of the chaos, fed up with being overwhelmed, and ready to enjoy life again. Each week, we talk about how to let go of the clutter so that you can focus on the things that actually matter. And it's not just physical clutter. We talk about the mental and emotional stuff too, because if it's holding you back, it's time to ditch it. I share what I've done in my own life to declutter, organize, and calm the chaos, but you won't just hear it from me. There are amazing guests too. It's practical, doable, and simple for those of us that want to be clutter-free. It's the Wanna Be Minimalist Show with Deanna Yates, episode number 30. On today's episode, we are talking to money management blogger and podcaster Ashley Patrick about how to be intentional with your money. We also uncover a bunch of money myths and how they relate to clutter. So stay tuned because what you learned today could open a whole new world for you. Hey there, welcome back to the show. As always, I'm your host, Deanna Yates. In today's episode, I'm having a conversation with money management expert, Ashley Patrick from Budgets Made Easy. As a mother of three kiddos, Ashley has discovered that living intentionally, whether it's how she manages her money or the stuff she allows in her home, gives her the freedom to enjoy more guilt-free fun in her life. Oh, and let's not forget that she paid off nearly $45,000 of debt in just over a year. Yeah, she can teach us a bit about being intentional, creating a plan, and following through. Ashley helps busy moms save money and pay off debt using simple systems so they can reach their big dreams easier and faster. She's a master financial coach and has been featured on sites like Fox Business, Yahoo Finance, USA Today, CNBC, and many others. It's a good show, and we're in for a lot of fun. Now let's get on with our conversation. Ashley, welcome to the podcast. I'm so excited to have you on the Wannabe Minimalist Show. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. Of course. So I always like to start, um, and I know that this is a little different than the last few guests I've had on. Your niche is not really in the minimalism space. Um, You are uh, more of a financial blogger, but that definitely goes hand in hand with living a more intentional life. So I kind of want to find out about your story and what you find most interesting maybe about living intentionally. Yeah, so I am a mother of three, three little kids, and I was a police officer and detective for about a little over 10 years before I quit to stay at home with my three crazy children. Uh, So, you know, life's a little crazy, and that is really why I try to be intentional. I'm not perfect at it, trust me, and definitely not perfect at, at minimalism, but I really think that budgeting and managing your finances, it's very similar to minimalism in that you are super intentional about what your goals are and what is getting you to your goals and what is important to you and your family so that you can cut out all the rest of the noise and all the rest of the things that are distracting you, which is really you know, what a lot of minimalism and, you know, living a simple life is all about. It's just more focused on your finances and really being intentional with your spending and with your money so that you can live that life that you want, you know, whether it's traveling the world or staying at home with your kids, you cut out all the rest of the noise and the distractions and all the little things that are taking your money that you don't even realize so that you can be intentional with your money to get to those priorities and what is really important to you and your family. Absolutely. Oh gosh, that's so perfect. It really does tie right right in. I noticed that your expertise with your blog and business really is that budgeting and money management, but you also have a a degree in psychology. Am I right? Yes. All right. So let's talk about the money mindsets because I think that like you were saying with living intentionally, those do have a lot in common with minimalism. So what would you say are the biggest mindsets that you see holding people back? Yeah, so mindset is so incredibly important. I really try to focus on that more because, you know, people want a quick fix and they want to save money right now so that they can, you know, hopefully get to their bigger goals. But your mindset is really what controls your finances and how you spend your money and what you spend your money on. On And that improving how you think about money is really how you're going to stick with it in the long term because the quick fixes are great and, you know, they give you motivation, but 
you know, they're not going to keep you um, focused on the long term. That's more of a short term thing. So with your money mindset, things like, you know, how you were brought up and um, raised and how you were taught about money or not taught about money or certain things that you think, um, you know, money miss. So, you know, a lot of people say, you know, money is the root of all evil. Well, it's not the root of all evil. The Bible actually says it's the love of money is the root of all evil. And, you know, money is just an inanimate object. So you can use money for so many good things, but a lot of people have a negative connotation around money and that, you know, wealthy people are bad and things like that. So if we can kind of work on shifting your mindset and into that money is a positive thing and it'll get you to where you want to be in life and you can help more people and be generous and, you know, not have to stress about money and, you know, set up a legacy see for your children, um, you know, all those things that all goes back to your mindset. Like money management is really simple math, but it's all the other things, all the emotions around it and all the things that we tell ourselves about money that affects what we do with that money. So it's really, it's really the most important part of money management is how you think about money and how that influences how you spend money. You know, uh, a lot of people even spend money and shop and overspend, you know, to deal with depression and things like that. So if you're not getting down to why you're doing certain things, you can't make those long-term changes that you need to so that you can get to your bigger goals. It fits right in with clutter too, because again, you're depressed using that last example. Uh, You find yourself depressed and instead of working on that mindset, you go out to buy something. Well, then you bring it into your home and it kind of becomes the snowball effect. So I can see, you know, Mm -hmm. they really do go hand in hand. Absolutely. Oh yeah. It's definitely a cycle and depression in and of itself is a cycle. So, you know, you go and you spend money. Well, now I feel stupid and guilty. And so then that just Mm. starts that whole mental cycle. Same thing with the clutter. Well, I know I shouldn't have bought this, but I bought it anyway. And you know, I shouldn't have done that and I shouldn't have spent that money. And then, and then you just start to spiral out of control. So, you know, if you can kind of stop that and say, okay, yes, I shouldn't have bought this, but it's not the end of the world. Let's move on and move past it. You know, forgive yourself. Forgiveness is a big thing with money. Like we've all made mistakes. Like shoot, I still make mistakes. You know, nobody here. is perfect. <laughs> we are all human and we all make mistakes. And you know, the most important thing is learning from that. You know, failure is a huge catalyst towards success. Like if you ask any successful person why they're successful or like what was the turning point, it's almost always a failure or almost always like some big event that changes their mindset and how they think that really moves them towards success. So failure should be embraced and, you know, learn from it and move on. Don't let it hold you back and keep you stuck in that place. Yeah. Good point. So kind of getting along that, those lines, you know, how would you recommend that we move past these mindsets? Because there's so many times we don't even know we have them. We're just going about our daily life and not moving in the direction we want to, but we don't know why, or we don't even know we have these negative things blocking us. So how do you even recommend that we start to move past these? Um, Well, you know, just even talking about them, you know, like we are now and thinking about, okay, well, what do I think about money? Like get down to the root of it. Like, okay, what did my parents think about money or what did they show me about money or who are some healthy, well-off people in my life that I can look to and, you know, what is good about them or what, you know, what things do they do and just kind of start thinking about those little things and how it may affect you. Or, you know, when you go shopping and then you start to feel guilty about it, stop and think, okay, well, why did I really order that thing on Amazon or go, uh, well, now we can't go to the store right now, but you know, why did I order that thing online? Like really, did I need it? Did I want it? You know, is it filling some type of void for me? Do I feel like, uh, my children need it or they're going to think I'm a terrible parent. You know, a lot of times we spend so much money on our children and I'm guilty of it too. I've got three kids. I mean, and there's just stuff everywhere, but especially if you're wanting to, you know, live the minimalist life, you got to stop and think, okay, 
why do I think my children need this? And, you know, is it a want or is it a need? And it really just takes those small little steps over time to really get to where you want to be. And another thing I, I forgot to mention about the mindsets, another big one, especially with money is not believing that you can actually do it. And so like, why would you even start something if you don't, if you think you're going to fail at it? So if you don't think that you can save money or you don't think that you can pay off your debt because it's $50,000 and there's no way you're ever going to be able to pay it. Why would you even start? So for a lot, for that mindset, um, I really like to have, and I used to do it myself. I paid off $45,000 in debt in 17 months. And what wow. one of the things, yeah, I don't, I think I forgot to mention that, <laughs> but, <laughs> but as I was doing that, to stay motivated, I would read other people's stories about how they paid off debt. And so that can be helpful too. When you see other people be successful and especially if you can connect with them, like if they're kind of in the same place that you are, you know, cause there can be some that make more money than you or less than you, or, you know, two incomes and you have one. Um, but it's really about being an intentional with your money. So it really doesn't matter how much money you make or, you know, anything like that. It's, you know, cause anybody's in debt can be in debt. So find stories of people that are in a similar place that you are and see how they did it and just read them for motivation. I would read them like every, every night before I went to bed. So it's like, okay, if they can do it, then I can do it. And that is a big, big part of it because I mean, if you don't believe you can do something, you're not, you're not really going to try or put the effort into it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I hear you. It, it reminds me of those stories. Like, you know, you hear the people that win the lottery and then three years later, they're declaring bankruptcy because Mm -hmm. it isn't really about how much money you make. Just like you said, it's not about that. It is about taking what you have and making the most of it. And absolutely, there are definitely people that are more well-off than others when it comes to money, but there are so many inspiring stories about people in all, you know, income levels. And it is, it's fascinating. I definitely get sucked into the success stories. They're really exciting to read. So they are. And, you know, <laughs> and I always like, I share a ton of them on my website as well. And so, you know, whenever I share one, that's like, you know, maybe they're doctors, like I've got some that are doctors. Well, people are like, well, of course they can pay off their debt. They make all this money. But the point, is, is that they were intentional with their finances and they actually did it and followed through with it. They could just keep doctor sized debt too, you know, and they could keep living their lifestyle. It's really about changing that mindset of, you know, spending your money and, you know, living with debt to, I want to pay this off and I want to save money. You know, of course they may be able to do it a little bit faster or maybe even a little bit easier than you, if you don't have that kind of income, but it's still about being intentional with your money and paying it off. Like I even have stories about a single mom who made like 30 some thousand dollars and she paid off, I think it was 20 something thousand and like a year or somewhere around in there. So I have like, I have stories on both ends of the spectrum. So it's really not necessarily about how much income you make. Of course, if you have a low income, you know, we need to find ways to bring your income up to make it faster, but it's really about being intentional because you can make all the money in the world and still live with debt and stress and live paycheck to paycheck. Like just because you make a bunch of money doesn't mean you're not living paycheck to paycheck. That's very true. Okay, so we've talked about planning and being intentional. So I guess it ta- it brings me into kind of budgeting because obviously when people think of financial planning and money management, they think, oh, there's going to be this budget and I'm going to have to stick to this budget and it's going to be really restricting. And I feel that kind of same mindset around when I try to teach people about routines and decluttering on a regular basis. Um, yeah. So why do you think it's so important, though, for people to create and stick to a budget? Um, And then we'll kind of talk about how to get started with that. I'm Margaret. And I'm Amy. And together we host the podcast, What Fresh Hell? Laughing in the Face of Motherhood. Margaret, I would say you're sort of a where are my keys kind of mom. Correct. Sometimes a where are my kids kind of mom. (laughs) Well, you're, Amy, more of a we were supposed to leave 35 seconds ago, mom. I mean, touche. In each episode of What Fresh Hell, we come at a topic from our usually completely opposite perspectives. I bring the research. And I bring kind of the gimlet eye. Like, is that research really going to work, people? 
And almost 10 million downloads later, we're still laughing. We also talk to experts in the parenting field, plus parents with stories we can all learn from. We make each other laugh, we challenge each other's assumptions, and we have what we think is the best parenting community on the internet. Check out What Fresh Hell? Laughing in the Face of Motherhood wherever you listen to podcasts. Well, it, of course it's important because it's just a plan. Like it's what you make it. So if you don't like the word budget, call it something else. Like a lot of people call it a cash Good flow point. plan or just, <laughs> you know, call it your money plan. Like if you just like some people just really hate the word budget. So think of a different name for it. Uh, but it's really just an intentional plan for your money. So and, you know, just making the plan will really lower your stress levels because, you know, sometimes people think that their situation is way worse than it really is. Once they write down their income and their regular expenses are like, oh, I do have money left over at the end of the month. It's just that, you know, it's mindlessly being spent other places and you just don't realize it. So, you know, that's the part of sticking to it. But once you create the plan it can just really lift a weight off of your shoulders because you have a clearer picture because in our minds, we usually make mountains out of molehills. And so we make it, we think that our situation is so much worse than it usually is. Of course, that's not the case 100% of the time, but generally speaking, you know, we can easily find ways to cut expenses and cut um, the overspending. But what's really great about a budget as well is you get to decide where your money is going. So if you want to, you know, have so much money for fun each month or each week, each paycheck, however you want to divide it up, you get to do that and you get to have fun without the guilt because you know you have the money for it and you know that you have money to pay your bills and you know that you have money and a plan to reach your bigger goals and you can still have fun with your money and do it without any debt. Like you can just pay for something and go and enjoy yourself and you don't have to worry about, oh my gosh, I don't want to have to worry about the credit card statement next month after I go to this concert and all, you know, all those things around when we spend money and we're not sure like how we're going to pay for it. You know, same goes for Christmas and vacation and things like that. So, you know, you get to make a plan and you get to spend your money the way you want without the guilt. It puts you right back in control, right? Yes. Yes. It gives yeah. you control. And, you know, just like we were talking about with intentional living, it's just being intentional with your money. So like if you want every single penny to go into savings or debt, you can do that. Um, and, you know, it may change month to month. You know, one month you want to have more fun money because, you know, something's coming up and you'll send less money to savings or debt or whatever, you know, whatever your big goal is. But you get to make that choice and you get to be intentional with your money. So you are still focused on the short term and the long term. And you can kind of you get to see the big the big picture. OK, so we know why we want to create one. And now everyone's on board and they're like, OK, I'm going to create a plan. Now, <laughs> how do they even get started? If this is something they've been terrified of in the past or they just have all these blocks up against it, how do we even start? And that is usually what holds people back. They are just overwhelmed to even get started. So, of course, I have a couple of things on my blog as well on how to get started. And I actually have a seven day budget challenge that breaks it down. You just focus on one thing at a time because I think that's super important, especially if you are overwhelmed. You don't need to like think about, oh, my gosh, I need to do this and this and this and this and this. No. Just focus mm -hmm. on one thing at a time. And so it's like one thing each day. And you really want to sit down and think about why you, why, like, why do you need to create a budget? What is your reason? Like, do you, and what are your big goals? They kind of go hand in hand. So, you know, your why could be, well, I want to stress less about money. Um, but, you know, your goal needs to be a little bit more specific. Like, okay, well, what's going to make you less stressed about money? Uh, having you know, money and savings, you know, a specific amount in a specific amount of time. Like you want to make smart goals. So you want to be specific and measurable and timely. And I always forget what A is. It's like actionable or something. Yeah. Like <laughs> yeah I can never or remember accountable. What a is. Like sometimes it's, it's one accountable. Of those two. <laughs> 
to delegate it, but usually I'm working on my goals myself. Uh, I always forget what A is, but yeah. So, but the the important thing is they're specific, they're measurable and they're timely. And that, you know, it's something that you can realistically do in that time. Uh, So, you know, it doesn't, we need specific goals, not just, I want to stress less about money. It's, well, what would make you stress less about money? Paying off, you know, how much debt you, let's say you have 50,000. Well, I want to pay it off in three years. You know, that is specific. It's measurable and it's timely. Yeah. You want to focus on your why and like what kind of what your big goal is, what's going to keep you motivated. And then you just get down into the numbers. Um, and this is usually where people are like, I don't want to deal with it. Uh, I'm not going to do it, but it's really super important. Uh, you need to know how much money you make and then you need to go through your spending. Like what bills do you have? And then it's just simple math, figure out how much you have left. Now how I teach people to do it, because in my mind, it just makes more sense, but I budget by paycheck. So I make a budget for every single paycheck. Um, and depending on your situation, that could be weekly. Um, it could be bi-weekly, but I need to know like what bills to pay with each paycheck. And then that gives you like, you can break down how much to spend on food and how much to spend on fun and how much to put towards your goals and things like that. Because when you just look at like the whole month, it just can get a little overwhelming. So I break it down by paycheck. Um, That's a fantastic idea. I mean, it really works. Like that's just how I've always done it since I had a job at like 16 years old. Like I, you know, it's the month, but it's by paycheck and you know what to pay each paycheck. So it just makes more sense to me. Now, some people don't like that. They want the whole month, but the important thing is just to sit down, figure out how much money you have, because a lot of people don't even know how much money they make. And then figure out, you know, write out your regular monthly expenses and then decide what to do with what's left over. That's where you get to have the fun. You get to decide how much money you want for fun or eating out or um, how much you want to just put towards savings or put toward extra debt. That's where the magic happens. And that's where you can reach your big goals super fast. Like you don't have to take 10 years to pay off debt. You don't need to take 10 years to have an emergency fund. Like, You just need to be intentional with the money that is left over. And then, you know, of course, if you want to find ways to save money or make extra money, you can get there even faster. But, you know, a lot of times it just takes sitting down and being intentional with the money that you already have. And then as you get going, you're like, oh, this works and I can do this and and I can do it fast. And then you're like, okay, well, how can I do it faster? And that's where you really start to pick up momentum. But in the beginning, You just sit down and figure out what you have and what your goals are and then be intentional with that money that is left over. Cause that's usually where people get in trouble. That's where I got in trouble. Like I used to just write down, okay, well this, how much I'm getting paid and these are the bills and we would spend what was left over and then some. So Mm -hmm. that's where you got to be intentional was, is after everything is paid and you've got, you know, X amount left over, that's where you need to be intentional and move it towards your goals and figure out what you want to do. Oh, brilliant. I've actually never heard the by paycheck uh, budgeting example. So I think that's a really interesting way that it could help a lot of people get over that. Yeah, that full scary month where a lot can get away from you. It sounds like it's a reasonable mm-hmm. amount of time. And yet when I think about it, like it really is 30 days or 31 days is is a lot of time. And so it's hard to know what's going to happen, you know, at the end of the month when you're at the beginning. Yeah. And it makes it easier to not run out of money by the end of the month. You know, a lot of people, they have their food budget set for the month and then two weeks later it's all spent. So what I do is I break it down either by week or by every two weeks, depending on how I decide to shop um, for that paycheck. It makes it a lot more manageable. So then at the end of the month, you're not out of money for food. So it, it really does just make it more manageable so that you can just focus on that week or that two week period, or, you know, if you get paid monthly, um, I would still break it down, especially for food. Cause that's usually mm-hmm. the area that most families overspend. So even if you get paid monthly, you can still break it down. Okay. I want to spend $800 on food and then break that down per week so that it's a lot more manageable and it's easier to stick to your budget that way. I love it. So let's get back to talking about emergencies. You brought up an emergency fund. And while we're recording this, we are in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic. And states are just starting to open up just to give everybody some context. But what can listeners do to help secure themselves financially in such an uncertain time? Absolutely. So if you don't already have at least, you know, 
at least a thousand dollars in savings. I I mean, with all this stuff going on and that it could possibly come back in the fall, I would recommend you have like three months of expenses saved, but that can feel kind of daunting if you've never saved anything in your life. So start with a small amount, like a thousand dollars. And then if you get a thousand dollars, then 2000, you know, make it small goals. So it doesn't feel overwhelming, but you know, use what you can and try and save as much as you can right now. Like, do you have things that you can try and sell? Or, you know, do you feel comfortable enough to get an extra job right now, like at a grocery store, those places that are hiring, you know, just to make some extra money. But if you're, you know, if you're not comfortable with that and you just want to stay at home, there's jobs online that you can do as well. There's, you know, little ways to make money, like with apps and things that you can get a little bit of cash back. I mean, it's not a ton usually, but, you know, it's a little bit and it helps and it doesn't usually take much time. So there are still ways to make extra money. But the most important thing I would do is figure out, okay, how much money am I making right now? What are my expenses? What can I cut if I need to? Like if your income has been cut, then you need to look at expenses that you can cut as well. And just try and save as much as you can. I mean, obviously summer is coming and we're going to want to get out of the house and we're going to spend some money, but set a small goal for yourself. Like how can I save at least $1,000? Like I would love for everybody to have at least a thousand dollars before fall comes. I would really love it if you could have at least like a month of expenses before fall comes, because you know we don't know what the winter is going to look like. And come September, I think that once the um, the payment, the uh, paycheck protection loans start to um, that time period ends when they can start laying people off. Like the airlines have already said they're going to start laying people off in September because that's when that time frame is to get reimbursed for that. So those companies that took those loans and things, once September comes, there is the potential that there could be even more layoffs. Um, hopefully, you know, there's more, you know, the businesses are open and, you know, there's other jobs and stuff available, but, you know, nobody really knows right now. So the best bet right now is to save what you can and just focus on like a small amount that you can, that doesn't seem overwhelming to you. Like if three months of expenses just seems totally impossible to use, you know, focus on a thousand dollars and just save what you can, um, just in case. Oh, it's a good point. And it's another, you know, good reason to start living minimally if you haven't yet, because by clearing out that clutter, you can find things to sell. Mm -hmm. Um, Part of our story is that we did at one point sell 90% of what we owned to travel with our child. And we've bought a lot of it back since we've become more stationary. But, you know, we made a ton of money. And so you can, you can sell your things off and and make money and you can live with a lot less than most of us have in our homes. So it's a good reminder and for everybody to kind of get prepared. And um, it's just good, even if this all goes away and nothing else happens, it's still fantastic to be ready for any emergency that might come your way in the future. So Mm -hmm. absolutely. And then one final topic, let's maybe make it a little bit more positive as we get out of here. But one more final topic I want to address is paper clutter. And it seems like there are a ton of listeners that have questions when it comes to what financial papers they need to keep. They have lots of questions about lots of paper. But since you are our financial expert, um, I want to ask you about that kind of stuff. So any tips or rules to follow here for those financial papers that we can maybe get rid of and clear out our spaces? Yeah. So you, of course, need to keep your taxes and your tax paperwork for, I think it's seven years. But, you know, the other stuff, I get rid of it after like a month or two. Like, I don't keep my monthly bills. You know, a lot of them you can just go for online email statements as well. So you don't even have to get it in the mail and deal with it in the first place. There are a few things that I still get in the mail, but most of them are all online now. The only thing that I do keep are uh, receipts for like HSA expenses. So like if you have a flex spending account or a health savings account, you do need to keep those receipts for anything that you used with your card. Uh, Because if you get audited, you have to have those receipts or you could have to pay taxes and penalties on any um, anything that you use that money for that wasn't health related. So you do need to keep those. So I just keep um, those receipts in like a manila envelope in a drawer. The rest of it I get rid of. Like there's 
you know, I keep it like a month maybe, and, or, you know, if it's important, like insurance paperwork, um, something like that I may keep. Um, but you know, I just try and keep it organized. That's the big thing, you know, just everything has a place. So if you don't have a place for it, make a folder or make an envelope that you can just stuff it in. Cause I'm really, I'm actually really bad about paper. Like all the mail, it sits on my kitchen counter until like, it just gets on my nerves. And then I, uh, you know, chuck it and stuff. So I have found that if I have like a specific place to put something, then I do it right away. It's all those things on my counter that like, I'm not sure where to put. And so if you can find a place, you know, just that it has its own place, it'll make it a lot easier. But most of that stuff you don't need, like you can go online and print off statements for like years, you know, at least a year for most places. Now, if it, if they don't have it, then you may have to pay a fee to like go, like, especially banks. I think they keep everything for like, you can have it for free online for like a year. And then after that you have to pay or something like that. It depends on the bank, but most of that stuff you do not need to keep. So I just, I have a folder that I start at the beginning of the year. And then when stuff comes, I just shove it in the folder and then I stick it in a drawer. Well, it's where you need it when you need it, but exactly. we'll, we'll talk offline maybe about the uh, mail coming into your house. <laughs> I know. And you know, I don't even have that much cause like I don't have that much stuff anymore that right. comes to the house, but yeah, it's really the kids stuff like yeah. from school. And so I, you know, I keep it in the attic and so it's hard to get into the attic. And so then it sits there staring at me. And so I really need to figure, <laughs> I, I do need to work on that. I know I'm sure you can help me with it. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, a question to follow up on some of like the taxes and the receipts. Can you scan those things? Do you know if they'll accept a scanned copy? Oh yeah. I, you know, I, I don't do that cause I, and I didn't even think about it, but yes, you can, um, scan it and it should be like, I don't see any reason why the IRS would not take it. Like, you know, it looks like a legitimate receipt and you scan it in. So yeah, a lot of people do that as well and just keep it like in the cloud or something. The only See, the only thing that makes yeah. me nervous about that is if like, you know, if you don't keep it in the cloud and then your computer crashes or you lose your extra hard drive, like I'm super paranoid about that stuff. So I do, I just keep paper stuff like that. I know I need to keep, I yeah. do keep it as paper. So, uh, that's just me though, but you can scan things. A lot of people do. Um, I actually don't know any of the apps or anything like that. I'm sorry. Oh, that's I'm okay. Sure you no, can. no, no, it's fine. We can look that stuff up, but it's all, it's all researchable. But I was just curious if the question, you know, if the answer was yes, that is allowed. And then it's worth further research. If it, if the answer is like, eh, no, the IRS wants it to be physical, then moot question. <laughs> Yeah, I don't see where that would be a problem, but you know, I was in law enforcement for so long and I just don't trust like, yeah, I don't know. I'm just paranoid about it, but yeah, I mean, I would take documents if it was scanned in, but if you actually have the physical copy of it, it definitely is better. <laughs> so okay. I just like keep physical copies of, of stuff that, especially for the IRS. Cause I mean, yeah. you know, we're all like paranoid about the IRS or, you know, at least I am. So yeah, I just keep, <laughs> I just keep physical copies of stuff just in case, but that's me. Awesome. Well, Ashley, this has been so much fun. I have really enjoyed um, speaking with you. You've given us a lot to think about and a lot of, you know, ways to look at just our life with intention, both with our stuff, with our money, with how we manage our money. And this has been a, a joy to speak with you today. So thank you so much for joining us on here. Thanks for having me. It was fun. Yeah. Well, I know people are going to want to find you. So now that we all know about you. Where can people find you, look you up, all that stuff? Um, my website is budgetsmadeeasy.com and I have lots of free stuff to get you started on there. And then on like Facebook and Instagram, everything is Budgets Made Easy. So as long as you can remember Budgets Made Easy, you can find me everywhere. Awesome. And then my favorite way to end each interview is with three, three somewhat rapid fire questions. They're not super quick, but we'll try. Um, what's your favorite What's been your favorite simple pleasure this week? Oh, M&M's. <laughs> Ooh, that's a good I one. I may have eaten a little too many. Like, it's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> I, I bought, like, the big, you know, the, the big jar at uh, the warehouse store to try and help my toddler uh, potty train because he was doing really well last week. Well, of course, like, this week he's, like, over it and he doesn't want to do it. And I ate, like, all the M&M's. Oh, well, that's okay. <laughs> You're allowed. Um, what is the best advice about budgeting that you've ever received? Or we budget. won't even use that word budgeting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a 
of just money, money management, you know, Love in it. it's just focus on one thing at a time. Like just, just one thing. What is the one thing that you can do? Oh, brilliant. And then what is making you happy right now or in this season? I know it's a little bit crazier than we've any, any of us have ever experienced. So what's making you happy right now? Just having this extra time with my kids and, you know, it's stressful. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. It's been really, really hard, but I'm really trying to just focus on the good, the positive things and just that we have this extra time to spend together right now. Oh, so sweet. I hear you. That double-edged sword. Love it. Yes. And you hate it all at the same <laughs> yes, time. Exactly. <laughs> oh yeah. So again, Ashley, thank you so much. And everybody, please go check Ashley out. Uh, she's got some really great advice. Um, and she also has a podcast too. So if you like podcasts, uh, make sure you jump on hers. What's the name of your podcast again? Oh yeah. And of course that's the only thing that is not budgets made easy for some reason, but I, it's called the money mindset podcast. So I try and focus on the mindset around money. Oh, fantastic. Well, and as we've all learned today, mon mindsets between money and clutter are very similar. So it will definitely be helpful for everybody. I will make sure we have the links in the show notes so everybody can find you, both your blog and your podcast. So Ashley, I wish you all the best today. And um, as we make it out of this coronavirus fog, and hopefully things go well in the fall, and we can enjoy our emergency funds instead of having to spend them on quarantine issues. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Thanks for having me. It was fun. Of course. Take care. Bye-bye. So wasn't that a great episode? I mean, Ashley really knows her stuff. And those thoughts around letting go of the negative mindsets that are not serving you are spot on. Now, if you think you can't do something, then you're right. You can't. And that has been said in so many different ways, but it really is time to stop with the excuses and comparisons and start creating that life that you want for yourself and for your family. Now, I completely believe creating that life begins with being intentional about all of the aspects of your life. So be intentional with how you spend your money. Be intentional with what you let into your home. Be intentional about who you spend your time with and you will find that your journey toward minimalism, it just starts to unfold before you because you are thinking about every aspect of your life and your home and your money, and it all fits together. So thanks again to Ashley for being a guest on The Wannabe Minimalist Show and for teaching us about being intentional with our money and also how to overcome those negative money mindsets. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode of the Wanna Be Minimalist Show. Thank you so much for joining me today. And if you liked what you heard, it would mean the world to me if you would leave a review on iTunes. And while you're there, please take a second to subscribe to be notified of new episodes. And one final thing, be sure to join us again next Thursday when I'll be talking to a habit-forming expert who will show you how to help your children form positive habits for life. Now, there are some awesome freebies for you to get your hands on too, but seriously, come for that freebie, but stay for the amazing information. You do not want to miss it. I will see you next week. Cheers. <laughs>